in this session we are talking about the way forward in india pakistan relations as far as the left in india is concerned we think that the future course of direction in our whole south asia region the future of peace of progress of development for our entire south asia region to really go forward go forward politically in a democratic fashion economically to go towards a path of development which will lift up the millions and millions of people who are in poverty in this region and also for the overall peace and stability for in asia today as we look around the world we find that there is a growing trend for regional cooperation and regional groups and blocks to be formed new alignments are taking shape we have seen how in latin america there is great progress being made among the latin american countries for economic and regional cooperation only recently the all the latin american and caribbean countries got together to form a community of the latin american and caribbean countries we have seen how great progress has been made by asean earlier we saw just in the last two days in delhi the brics summit where new put the potential of this alignment of block of countries has been shown but really we have not seen any real progress in south asia and the heart of the problem lies in the relations between india and pakistan now i think the way forward from what i can gather from what discussions you have had i see it as threefold in three areas the first is the political that is the state to state relations india and pakistan the dialogue which has been there the composite dialogue which has had its ups and downs we on the left in india have consistently maintained that this dialogue should continue this dialogue should be broadened and deepened and irrespective of the government in power here in delhi we have maintained that there should be no let up there should be no stalling of the dialogue in this connection the areas of discussions that you have had all those areas are part of this dialogue shahid siddiqui mentioned about the promise or the potential that, that was there in the first early years of the upa government at that time yes he is right we had expected we had thought that the upa government would be able to take some substantive steps to resolve some of the outstanding issues and notwithstanding our various problems and difficulties with the upa government uh, we had consistently been uh, supporting and asking the prime minister at that time to really sincerely try and uh, address these problems and try to resolve some of them it is unfortunate that even the most i think 
in one sense the most ridiculous uh, issue or the confrontation that we have between the two countries on the Siachen Glacier and the huge amounts of money and resources that we spend and in which a large number of our soldiers die of frostbite, not from any other enemy attack or fire. Even that problem which could have been solved, according to me, uh, in 2004 to 2007, that could not be resolved. But as far as Jammu and Kashmir is concerned, the Kashmir issue is concerned, I am not going into that now because there is not much time for that. We have been telling the government that here is a problem which needs to be discussed with Pakistan, it needs to be discussed with the people of Kashmir, the dialogue with the people of Kashmir, all shades of political opinion within Kashmir and simultaneously talking to Pakistan. But at the same time, this should not hold the overall progress in relations up. It cannot be hostage. The overall process of advancing our relations, you can keep talking about Kashmir, it should be part of our dialogue with Pakistan. But just as in the case with China, we have this joint working group on the border dispute which has been meeting every year, every six months and at times some efforts are made to try to see if they can take this forward. We have had special efforts made for that. But both countries know that this will not be resolved very soon. And therefore, uh, we have decided, we had decided not now, two decades earlier, that let us start improving our relations in other spheres. And you see the results of that today, that China is the biggest trading partner of India. In this last year, we have had $63 billion dollars of trade with China. And I think the rate at which it is going will soon be $100 billion in the next three or four years. And therefore, the second area, while we carry on the political dialogue and we continue with our efforts at the governmental level to discuss this whole gamut of issues which you have discussed, water is there, water is a serious problem not only with Pakistan, we'll have, we have to discuss this with Bangladesh, we have to discuss it with Nepal. We have to discuss with China also about the Brahmaputra waters. Many th this is going to be a much wider problem for all the countries of this region. So we have to discuss these matters. But the real progress can be made, I think, in the area of trade and economic relations, which will be of enormous benefit to, the, to our two countries and the peoples of our two countries. And that is why, as the previous speaker mentioned, the favored nation status which has now been agreed upon by both countries should really be the point of takeoff for us to now develop all round trade and economic ties, which will definitely help to create the atmosphere for, for the setting of relations on a very sound footing. While speaking about this, the political aspect, of course, is crucial. And here I am not talking only about the state-to-state -state relations and the formal official dialogue that is taking place or should take place. But we have to recognize that we have to fight various battles in our respective countries. Uh, I do not underestimate the political challenges and the difficulties regarding the breakthrough that we have to achieve 
in our mutual relations. In India, it is very much related to, directly linked to how far we succeed in the secular and democratic forces in our country succeed in isolating and weakening the communal and sectarian forces in our country. Uh, those who think that there is no real political obstacle or ch challenge to improving Indo-Pakistan relations, I think, are underplaying the issue. We have seen from our past experience how the the, the, the Pakistan threat and the bogey of Pakistan is constantly used in India to heighten communal tensions and communal politics, which, it's, which has its own detrimental effect on our democratic and secular uh, system. And therefore, we in India have to carry on this two-front struggle. One is to get the Indian government of the day to carry on with its efforts, whatever the difficulties to seriously address our mutual problems and issues and to improve relations. And at the same time, we have to create the conditions, the atmosphere whereby the political establishment in our country will feel, will get encouraged or will feel emboldened to go towards a path of uh, dialogue and reconciliation. Here, uh, our experience has been also, and I hope that will be of some value to our Pakistani friends also, that is after the Pokhran blast here and India declaring itself to be a nuclear weapon state, we had warned that this is a path which will lead, of course, you will also make the, go on the same path, Pakistan, and then you will have a situation in this region where the United States of America will be the arbiter between our two countries, between the relations between our two countries. And what has unfolded after 1998 and after 2001 it, is that you have this in, in both our countries, the governments and the political establishment has sought to use the United States as a mediator or arbiter in our relations. We, in our quest to get legitimacy as a nuclear state, we've entered into talks, we entered into agreements. I don't want to go into that whole history. And that is one of the major factors and reasons why we came out totally against the path adopted by the then Indian government, which led to a break with the UPA government at that time. But I think that in Pakistan too, today, you are already facing that problem about your relationship with the United States of America, which is a far deeper and complex relationship that than we have with the United States of America. But some of our rulers thought that is the path we should also take, enter finally into a subordinate alliance with the United States of America. And you are, I think, in, in the process of trying to review and come out of this, uh, ex get out of this sort of subordinate relationship. I think it's very important for the future of Pakistani the Pakistan's democratic system. This and facing the challenge of uh, extremism and terrorism. But in that, I think the third area which I'm going to talk about is here. Yes, everybody knows that we would like this dimension of people-to-people -people relations between our two countries to develop, to expand, to grow. But there I think political forces I'm talking about parties, political forces in, on both sides. There is a need for us to engage more with each other, interact with each other. And I think uh, 
that is an area where, of course, we have, we have some exchanges of our parliamentarians and uh, various other forums are there. But I think that in India, I think there has been a failure on the part of the, or weakness on the part of the left and democratic forces that we have not done sufficient to, 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 to link up, to relate to uh, the political parties and forces in Pakistan. Uh, I was telling one of my party meetings the other day, we are preparing for our All India Party Congress, that uh, we have better relations with various left, progressive, democratic forces in Latin America, in Europe, in other parts of Asia, and much less within our own region. You know. So this is one of the things which are very important, that along with this development of people-to-people -people relations, what you are talking about, civil society, I suppose you exclude us because we are political parties, though I don't agree with the definition of civil society, which is generally pervade. But I think that there, are, there should be political forces in India and Pakistan who should get together. We may have different views and uh, different opinions about various things, but we should get together and not leave it to the governments of the day to try to tackle and resolve these issues. So I hope that the two days discussions that you have had here in Delhi uh, would help in the process of us getting together in the future to see the way forward. Thank you. Thank you.